everybody. Welcome to Tadaima Terrace House Podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarpanito, and I'm joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. Jack Cepeda. Irishai Masai. And Colin Sparling. Let's play Kendama. Kendama. That showed up twice in today's episode. Or there were like two, right? Yeah, Risa is becoming obsessed with the Kendama. She's like in is that games. The- is that the thing with the ball and the string? Yeah, with like a little hammer shaped mm. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and another thing too is Jack is eventually going to run out of ways to say Rash Rashaimase. He's going to run out. I'm I'm yeah, hey, it's a it's a finite thing, all right? You don't need to bring it up. <laughs> can you can you I roll am your exhaust it though? Can you roll day. your Rs cuz if so that opens up a whole you new book of book. I'll work on it. Here, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try, I'll try oh, one more time. No. Thank Here. you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go in, guys. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna piss off the neighbors here. I'll try. I'll try one with with gusto and spirit here. Oh no! <laughs> oh god! Oh god! I was gonna say rip headphone users. <laughs> there. Did you hear that? I didn't. No. Could you do that again? Just one more time. Okay. No. One no, more time. No. Just kidding. No. 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 <laughs> I, I was like taking off my headphones. I was like rip headphone users, guys. Your hello. neighbors are just like there's a Japanese man welcoming there's, us there's next door. Angry, very angry Japanese man next yeah. door. No. The They're neighbor- gonna knock on your door like where, where's the Japanese guy? The neighbors are pissed. <laughs> <laughs> this week we're talking about Tokyo 2019 2020 episode four. I can't even say the name of this episode with a straight face. I want to be a hero. That is the name of this week's Tito. episode. Hero, hero, baby. It, yeah, it lives up to the name. It's so. This episode was really good, y'all. Uh, but before we dive in, uh, I want to give a little notice for you all right up here at the top. Uh, we're looking to do a Q&A kind of video episode thing sometime soon. Uh, so if you have any burning, passionate questions about who we are, how we do the show, how we watch Terrace House, maybe our our thoughts about Noah and Sana that we've never talked about before, things like that, you know, uh, feel free to send those to us via our social media channels, which you can find in the description below or in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast version of this. Uh, or you can send them to us on our brand new awesome Discord, which you can also find the link to in the description. Um, and if you don't want to maybe send us a question, Maybe consider leaving us an iTunes review. It helps us out, and it you know every little bit helps. We do the show ourselves, so you know maybe share a little love. It'd be great. Who uh, who I, else yeah. is doing the show if we don't do it ourselves, Robert? My clone. I will say, brother. No, you don't have a clone. <laughs> no, but listen, I will say that the Discord. I am shocked. Like it's brand new. We just started it a couple weeks ago, but there's people in it now, and they actually did it. They they joined, and now we have to. Do stuff on this call. Uh, guys, no. guys, I wasn't no. anticipating this. There's yeah. people, Wait. there's actual real people in our Discord. Yeah, yeah, people joined our Discord. Do no. it's, what do we do now? It's not a hollow promise. It's not like how we say tune in every week for episodes and we don't actually publish. It's like a real thing. Right. So it's, it's small, real. but it's growing. And if you've thought about joining, hey, this would be a great time and drop us a line and we might read your question on an upcoming episode. Heck yeah, brother. Join us. Yeah. The, pe- the people there in the Discord. Seem like nice people, so you'd be joining the family in the yeah, living is, room, so to speak. In the it is a tight knit Discord. Yes, join like the house. Come hang out. <laughs> come hang out in the living room. All right. Do we sound like a cult yet? Because if so, awesome. Let's get started, <laughs> guys. I really want to be a hero, and I want to start this week's episode. Let's talk about oh. the recap here. Uh, we've got the panelists. They kind of tell us about the whole Kenny love triangle, but there's also a little bit of a Ruka love triangle going on. Not so much love for Shohei, really. It's, he's there. Dude, he's there. He's dude, fine. Tokui had a moment in the very beginning. I here. love he's this talking moment. about the the uh, what was it? The peekaboo area. Yeah, he was talking about the purse swinging right in front of Haruka's crotch. Oh, uh, <laughs> like I, did, I swear okay, to you. Genuine question: Did y'all notice that? No, I swear to you. Like, I didn't notice it until Tokui said. Actively I, look for. I didn't no. see it. No, I didn't notice it at all. I never noticed until he did that. And then like Yama and Sho were like, "Oh, and you were doing that? We had to look around. <laughs> yeah, we had a pendulum our heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get we'll get to Yama. Yama was uh, on fire this episode. Yeah. I do love though how this was like the breaking point for Tori because I feel like you know throughout all the seasons of Terrace House we've seen so far, we've been we've been seeing her slowly and slowly get more and more corrupted and more and more okay with the dirty talk and then at this point Mm. she's like no 
Stop it. Yeah. Bad Toku. Get some help. <laughs> like, she, she's she was wearing pants. There's like there yeah. I don't understand how he how Toku he picked up on that and then it was, just ran with it. <laughs> It was a weird thing to notice for sure. And he ended up being like a dirty monk. Yeah. Like y'all said. And then Tori berating him, like made him turn red. And he was real apologetic. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Sorry. He I loved like it, bowed. Though. It was so good. <laughs> but let's let's dive into the actual meat of the episode here, right? So we open up, we pick up right where the last episode left off with Ruka and Haruka driving off in the sunset in the red Jaguar. And now we're seeing the inside of the car. And y'all, this hurt so bad to watch. It was like going back to it high school painful. and hating everything. It was yeah. like it. This was one of those scenes where they just it 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 just kept going, and it just was hanging. The camera was hanging Dude. on the scene for way too long, and it was just it, just to emphasize how much how dead the air was. And I'm like, cut, please, <sighs> cut, 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 <laughs> yeah. cut oh, it, no. cut. Because the conversation, the it starts off well enough. We learn that Ruka likes cars. We didn't really know that, that he was a bit of a gearhead. But hey, he likes cars. He sold a pu- Puget? Pujot? Puget? 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 A, Puget? Puget? a Pidget? 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 A Pidget? A Pidget? A French Pidget? car. Pidget? He sold a French car. Yeah. A, pure, a pirouette. So he, could, <laughs> so he could start saving up for a Harley he already has. He the, had a grandpa. Yeah, he already yeah, has the a motorcycle uh, license. Here's the mm. thing about Ruka here. Okay, did this young lad watch opening new doors like we did? The question I ask is because if he did, he took the wrong motherfucking lessons from that. He showed up in the car with a list. He made a list of things he wanted to bring up with Haruka, right? And he hey, said a mental list. A mental list. Yeah, a mental list. He didn't he didn't ring it out, right? So I give him that. But he had a list and it's like but he's like I forgot everything I wanted to ask you anyway. So it was just it reminded me, right? It was evocative yeah. of when Yui had her list. He he also took a weird kind of leaf out of Io's book too. He was like scratching in his ear really incessantly yeah. for like a minute and, like, and it was just uh, dead silent. <laughs> It was very awkward. It felt that was the most reality TV like moment that there was. Like as seemed, he was like racking yeah. his brain, like, do I ask her out? What do I say? <laughs> Instead, I'm oh, just God. gonna say, oh, I forgot. It seemed like it was nervous scratching, like it was fidgeting. Yeah. And the yeah. thing about it is that makes it all ultra awkward is you notice that there's certain things you can't do when you live at Terrace House. You don't think about this. But you can't play music like you normally would just play music mm. in a car, right? But you can't do that in this case because of licensing issues. So you notice they don't—you don't ever show them on the yes. show listening to music. It's always the show's own music that's playing, right? They're not listening, or it's in their headphones or something like that. But they're never playing, you know, just music in the house and enjoying it, and they're never listening to it in the car. They're always just talking, and it's always quiet. And it's kind of necessary to be able to air the footage, right? Yeah, and. You know, he he tries. God bless this boy's heart. He tried. You know, he he, tries. he opens up by asking, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? And then Haruka's is like, I've got a laundry list of all of these things I'm doing tomorrow. Very clearly, yeah. I do not have time. Busy. And then he just yeah. took that as a, well, we're going to we're just going to sit in this car silent for a while then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, listen I, to me scratch my head. It's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Watching him trying to. I'm like, dude, just just do it. Just ask her out like just he do had it. the best opening because he's like oh our schedules don't really sync up mm. and she's like no not really and he could have been like sometime it'd be cool if we could go get dinner like it was there i think she saw it plain as day too like mm. it wasn't super subtle but he just did not take that extra step I, yeah. i'm just like i'm like ask her out uh, ask her out give her ask your coat ask Give give her your coat. <laughs> give her your coat. Meanwhile, your coat. though, Haruka is picking up some nuggets of knowledge here. Like you said earlier, he wants to drive a Harley. So now she knows that he has a motorcycle license. And that was a plus, I feel like, yes. for, for Haruka there. Mm-hmm. Right? right. Yeah. I I think what we see throughout the course of this episode is a pretty big shift in, in Haruka's interests romantically. Right. Uh, the next scene here is in the kitchen with Risako, Ruka, Haruka, and Kenny. And they're actually making some Korean food. 
I mean, maybe there's like a Japanese version of this stuff, but this is totally beef and leaf. This is Sangyeopsal with some lettuce, and then talk about making gochujang for some of the jjigae's there for soups. They brought Basic, up some kimchi, yeah, kimchi too. Yeah, it was so kimchi. For me, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool to see because you know I, I grew up hmm. eating all that stuff. Um, but then uh, what's it? Ruka and Haruka kind of leave to go pick up some like one last ingredient that they all forgot, and now it's just Kenny and or no, it's Ruka and Risako that leave, Risako, and then it's. Yeah. Kenny and Haruka, Haruka shows off her guitar and Kenny tunes it and then is like, you need new strings. <laughs> These strings are bad. Dude, that's the whole thing that I didn't even think about when um, Ruka offered to pick up Haruka. Why does he need to pick her up? Because she has this guitar. Why does she want her guitar? Because she wants to bond with Kenny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why she's going to get it. And it never occurred to me until now. I was like, oh, duh, of he course. might have kind of screwed himself over in that sense. But yeah, we find yeah. out that this... That whole car trip actually worked very much in his favor. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was it was very jarring because we cut to the girls' room where Haruka is telling Kaori about the car ride she had with Ruka, and she was talking about how great it was and how easy it was to talk to him and how much fun she has talking to Ruka. And I'm like, that is definitely not the sense that we get from this edit of, yeah. of the the car ride. It was very strange. Yeah, it was. This is not the reaction I was expecting. Granted, we don't get much of Haruka's reaction and the cut that we do see of the car ride. But mm. even so, it would definitely jarring. Did not expect it at all. Yeah, it just feels like a, either a bad edit or I functionally, from a basic human understanding level, do not get what Haruka sees in people. There's a yes. couple, mm. speaking of bad edits, there's a couple in this episode that I pointed, that I stood out to me and I'll, I'll point it out later when we get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I th- I think that uh, it's just one of those things where where she was just smitten by the whole idea of someone she could talk cars with and Harley's yeah. and all that stuff. And as we'll find out too, compared to conversations that she'll later have with Kenny, I think that it is very clear that um, Ruka is the easier person to talk to because dang yes that, there, there, those later conversations with kenny <laughs> there's a hard contrast mm-hmm. there for sure yeah mm-hmm. but yeah nonetheless another little nug of info we get here is that haruka does feel weird about bringing this up with risiko right about her liking ruka so hmm. that just sounds to me like we're sowing the seeds of one thing that jack's been uh w- like wanting to happen for a while now of a haruka yes. risiko fight to the death on mm. on the roof of the house rumble I didn't want it to be over a guy, though. Mm. That's a little disappointing. If it happens, uh, I don't know what happens next. I didn't want them to fight over a guy. I just wanted them to fight because they didn't like each other. Over, like, <laughs> who left towels on the ground? Yeah, yeah. Or... Like, who, yeah, who <laughs> leaves water on the sink or something like that? Like, that's what I wanted. Who didn't rinse who... out the rice cooker? <laughs> who left their towel here? Who did this? <laughs> this, is, this smells like Haruka's <laughs> towel. Fight. I need to hunt her yeah. down. <laughs> and if it was over a guy, Sniff not Ruka, towel. man, come on. <laughs> Ruka is coming up. His stock is coming up. That's basically the theme of this whole episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is basically I hate it. Ruka you hate it. You're, you're Yama here. Yeah. I kind of am. Uh, yeah, Yama, Yama speaks what we're all thinking, I think. At least what I was thinking while watching the episode. Yeah. Uh, we cut to the living room where Ruka and Shohei are talking. And here is just Ruka saying his side of the story about how he feels like he failed. He missed the timing to ask Haruka out and I just I kind of what I think was going through Shohei's head is like how the fuck did you miss it you know just like dude just yeah. fucking just nut just up just do just it do it just do it yeah it's like it's not that hard especially because you already kind of are in her good graces like if she already was apprehensive to you I think she wouldn't have gotten in a car with her very expensive guitar with you mm. you know and I mean, as a whole, too, I don't feel like this whole, like, asking out is, like, such a big thing because it's, like, everyone goes out. Everyone, like, even as friends, just goes and gets food, you know. We're living Costco. together. Let's get to know each other. <laughs> yeah. Let's Costco. go to Costco. Let's go to Costco. Like, we'll let's go to Costco. <laughs> we'll fit everyone in the Jag and we'll drive to Costco. Yeah. Yeah. But-, but he's made it into, like, this big, like strangely romantic gesture and like if that fails then everything about their relationship will fail and it's like nah, that's right, not the way it's got to work bud he's still not use k levels of bad 
Right. <laughs> but so here's my thing is I want to start laying close. out this this idea of Ruka in this in this episode, right? That we're seeing the duality of man here. We're seeing <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing this the man who wants to reach reach high to the sky and get the dream girl, which in this case for him is Haruka, right? And when he does that, he's very timid, overthinks everything, his ear itches a lot. It's a really weird <laughs> setting for him to be in. But then when he is settling for Risako, which is maybe what he's seeing it as in his head, he's harsh, effortlessly charming. You know, we'll mm. find we'll, effortless. Yeah, we'll talk more about that later. But it's just so like, dude, how can you be this bad with one person and so easily on point with another? It's the it, you know, it's funny because I I. Don't, I'm going to pull a little bit of a tokui here with an aside, a personal aside. I I have been in a situation similar to this. Not as blunt, but I've been in a situation where like someone who is a romantic prospect for me in my head, I kind of act like an idiot around them because I like them, so I get nervous and blah, blah, blah. And things get played up in my head, especially when I was younger. It still kind of happens nowadays, but not nearly as bad. But, like, around someone that maybe has an, a passing interest in me or something like that, but I don't really have much of a romantic interest in, it's just, like, I somehow manage to be, I at least come off as flirtatious somehow or, like, effortlessly charming, I guess, in the case of Ruka. So, I, I, I know what he's doing and it sucks because I've experienced it. And, that, but now he's got to, I never got myself this deep in the hole like Ruka did, does right now. <laughs> so. Weird flex, yeah, just, but okay, man. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> I know, no. right? But it's, no, it's a I sucky think, situation to a, be in. Yeah, it, it's a relatable thing where it's yeah, like, it I is. want to impress this person and I cannot for the life of me. I don't care about this person's opinion and I somehow do like triple backflips in their presence. Yeah. yeah. It's but to be fair, we don't know what Ruka's reaction is to Risako yet. Yet. Yeah. Yet. Yet. We'll have to wait till next yet. week for that. Right. But uh, we have the, the intro go through. Same bad music. In my head, I still imagine bad. churches, graves by churches. It's, it's really bad. And and controversial opinion here, real quick. I was just thinking, like, with the bad intro song and the bad exit song, you guys know how much I love Frozen last season for OND. I was singing that all the time. I like that song. But I, I've come to the conclusion now that Terrace House is a niche show, and that's fine. I love it niche. That's great. But... I really think that the music choices, at least in North America, are now starting to hold the show back from expanding and growing. Mm. Just my thought. It, with the stupid intro song, with the stupid outro song, they're just missed opportunities to bring in more people to the show. And it might be like, what is this shit? I it mean, just might cheapen the show. So know, that's my controversial thought for the week. Consider, like, if Taylor Swift were still the intro here in America, do you think more people in America would care just because Taylor Swift is so popular here? I kind of pull in yeah, the Swifty I, fans. I kind of think it's... it would. If if you got a big name like a marquee name doing the theme song, I think it would draw more attention to the show it's from kind of, a Western audience. It's kind of like legitimizing. Yeah. Like if you yeah. you know cue up the episode and then suddenly Taylor Swift is playing and it's like, oh, this is the real deal. Yeah, I there's, know. That. There's money and effort. There's budget. Put into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And here's my right. aside for all for all the gamers out there. Do you think when in Japan? they had the church's song play Hideo Kojima was suddenly a fan of Terrace House yes yeah ah <laughs> instantly instant Hideo fan Hideo Kojima uh but to bring it back to the show we're in the living room now and it's just Ruka and Haruka right um Haruka just comes home from golfing because she's an old man uh and Risa goes <laughs> awesome upstairs like she's just finished showering or taking a bath or whatever and uh it's just Ruka and Haruka sitting on the couch and this also is just painful to watch because Ruka is so badly poking around like, oh, you have that date with Kenny, right? Uh, what time are you guys going? Uh, what do yeah. you guys all do? Oh, that's nice. You know, just like, dude. Still, it still fails to ask her out. I kind of got the fear in me that he was going to try and ask her out like the same day that she had that date with Kenny. Yeah. Like, cause, I was worried. It's like, dude, yeah, like, like, well, when do you get home? Oh, Let's go out when that. you get home. Yeah. yeah. Or after even. Yeah. yeah and I was like, don't do that. Don't do not do that. Yeah, that would have been a bad call, but I just feel like him poking around this one. Like, I feel like if he had just said, oh, you're going on a date with Kenny, right? Okay, cool. Have fun. 
Like that's that would be a good conversation. That's, that's playing but, it cool. Yeah, but to then ask like twenty questions about like where are you guys gonna go? What's what are you guys gonna do? What time are you going? Oh, like around <laughs> that time? Okay, that's cool. Oh, what route uh, are you taking? Yeah, yeah so that uh, I can follow, follow you. Yeah. Which which train line is it? Um. Yeah, and then he gets all nervous and starts fidgeting with his phone and starts smacking her in the leg. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, oh, so my leg is just a pillow. And I was like, it's the same color. Okay, like, I need to dude. ask who the fuck hits a knee. Like I've touched my knee and other human knees before. <laughs> When's the last time y'all have touched a knee and were like, that's a nice pillow. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, it was weird. I this would this was like middle school level flirting. <laughs> it was so bad. No, god. No, I don't think but he was doing were... it on purpose. Yeah. Know. What? And previous to that, I thought they were kind of like hitting it off. I don't think that like he suddenly he kind of ruined it with the with the phone thing. It got <laughs> it got suddenly very childish. But before that, when they were like, "Hey, here, like here's the Harley that I want," and they mm. were like practically cuddling. At yeah. least I'm sure mm. that's what Risiko thought as she walked mm. by. Yeah, because Risiko comes yeah. down, she starts doing her work there, right? And while she's doing work, you have these two gearhead nerds talking about cars and shit. And it was a really, like, for me, I think it was the editors kind of making a more tense situation out of what it was. But yeah, I, I agreed. I'd still say there was some tension there for sure. Because I'm like, everyone in the house probably knows about Risiko and Ruka kind of being a, like, they might be a thing, right? But they went on a date, yeah, and it was fun. And now we're seeing uh, Haruka and Ruka kind of bonding on a deeper level than just housemates, perhaps. I remember Haruka was showing him the hot rod on her phone and talking about the guy, one of the guys at the shop she goes to all the time, like Harley's. And didn't he say like, "Oh, I should go talk to him" or something? I can't remember. Yeah, but yeah, it was mm. it was definitely flirtatious. And I mean, then that almost set up a date. Yeah, Let's almost. Heaven, heaven forbid. But he couldn't punch the damn order. thing. He couldn't punch. He couldn't <laughs> steal yeah. the deal. Yeah, I'd love to Let's see. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, I'll take you sometime. Yeah. That's it. It's never spoken of again. Yeah, yeah. Ruka. Ruka's just Drop. he's tough here, man. And then there's a really short but definitely awkward silence. And then Risiko breaks it just by saying, man, I can't focus on my work. And I'm like, is it because you're distracted by your prospect not dating you anymore? Hmm. That's what it might be. She, I don't know. Man, the way she even said it, I was worried that she was about to like drop a damn bomb because yeah. she was like, "Do you want to know why I can't concentrate?" <laughs> yeah, and they're like, uh, "Why?" And she's oh, like, "Oh God, I can't stop thinking about Kendama." Oh. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was like something out of a sitcom or a cartoon or something like that. The way she said it. Yeah, like, like I can just imagine like sweat starting to form on Ruka. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it was one of those things where it's like, <laughs> like you see it on a kids' cartoon or something like that, and it, and then she would like look at the screen, and like the kids would be watching, and be like, you know why I can't focus on my work? Because I can't stop thinking about Ken Dama. Let's play Ken Dama, kids. <laughs> yeah, and then she goes on to say she wants to go to the toy shop and she wants to buy a board game. She wants to play the game of life. She wants to buy bean bags. And it was at this point that I was like. Along with this information and the fact that Risiko talks like a child sometimes, she's definitely one of those like I could see those those guys being like I need to protect her, you know this that kind is, of thing. This is very much in keeping with the first few sentences she said on Terrace House. Remember when she first met everyone on day one? She just started spilling it all right there. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. I just lay it all out there. Guys tend to not handle it. I'm single now because of it, da da da, and I'm like, wow, she really does just speak her mind. She lets it spill out. Yeah, maybe when it shouldn't. And it, yeah, and she she kind of did that as soon as yeah. um she was able to sit next to Ruka instead of Haruka and just being like, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, I cut down my hours at work and I'm really trying to think more into like doing parkour professionally, and mm. she got like kind of deep and it was like what what are your what do you want to do in the future like yeah. what what is your dream and then ah uh, <laughs> the iconic line okay before we Say it. before we get to that i i, I just <laughs> i want a duality of man here again right duality of man so ruka with haruka sure they got along while talking about gears right but you can tell ruka doesn't feel as assertive or as dominant in this in this relationship and he's very right. kind of holding back mm. 
All Risiko needs to say is, I want to go to the store and buy beanbags. And he's like, let's go. <laughs> you know, he's like immediately like a switch. He's not making an effort to make this easy. I don't yeah. know. I, I just don't know what is going through Ruka's head. Right. Is it's, he thinking that, uh, yes, what I'm doing right now is I am just being a friend. This is not. Or, yeah, I don't think this is complicated. Think. I just think, I think he doesn't. He doesn't like Risako. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't like her like that. He's no, a, I don't she, think so. He thinks it's, her it's little sister. Occurring. That's why. That's why it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. For him. Yeah. It's not occurring to him that he's doing anything to like lead her on because he doesn't imagine that those feelings are there. Exactly. Which is why he is able to, after Haruka leaves and takes a bath and it's just Risiko and Ruka talking, it's why he is able to answer the question, what do you want to do with your life Mm. with, I want to be a hero. I need a hero. Thanks, Bonnie Tyler. And this is why I want to make a proposal that we rename the show My Hero My Hero at a Terrace House. I need a hero. My. <laughs> and I want to be it, useful. Yeah. I want to be useful to people. Bless that guy. Yeah. So I, here's I, the thing. So it, what we know so far about Ruka's mindset when it comes to Risako, all we really know is that he said that you know, I'm not the type of person where, you know, I friend zone someone. If if feelings develop for someone, it, it, it they can develop over time. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, is he leaving the door open here? Like, and it's after that though. Like, I just don't know what he like. Then, then he also tells her, "I had a second dream about you." The he's, fuck? he's digging. He's just digging that hole deeper, dude. The he fuck? is. If he doesn't want Risaku, he's gonna fucking like, dude. Yeah, it's he's starting on the to verge piss of me off. It's starting to piss me off actually. Like the way yeah. he is with her. If if he doesn't like her, we'll find out. Time will tell. Right. Yeah. yeah. The the whole dream thing happens later in the episode, but it it's very much mixed signals because I think I I want to believe Ruka just sees Risako as a friend, and I think that's fine. Like I'm a firm believer that men and women can be friends, right? Like it it doesn't have to yeah. become sexual or anything in nature. Sure. But you also can't tell your friend. Like, I wouldn't turn to Colin and be like, bruh, you were in my dream last night. <laughs> Even if he was. Yeah. <laughs> See, we had this conversation, though, because, like, some people have really weird dreams. And it's just like, hey, Colin, you were in my dream last night and you worked at SeaWorld, but you were a firm believer in, like, releasing the animals. And so then you teamed up with a seal and... <laughs> That could talk. Keep going. Tank keep going. Keep I can going. Keep going. <laughs> no, it's one of those things where though it, that's one of those sentences where like, in and of itself is like, kind of head turning. But if you're going to say that, I don't think you. It's something you shouldn't say outside of like a romantic context. But you better be following it up with more context right after you say it. Yeah. Pretty immediately. Because the way he says it, he I leaves guess. it hanging. It's kind of like. Because if, if someone were to say, I dreamed of you, that I think holds a lot more romantic implication, right? Than just you were in you my were dream. You were in my dream. Yeah, but that, that's, night. yeah, that's how the translation was written, isn't it? Yeah, well, and it's also just the way he says it. He just kind of leaves it there hanging. He makes it sound like Risiko was the main event in his dream. I dreamed of Risiko. Risiko is the one to be my friend. Uh, you know? Friend. It, yeah, just to be my friend. <laughs> Um, when we uh, go back to the panel here, the well, prevailing theme, what? Yeah, I, I, I just kind of want to revisit the hero thing real quick, though. I need a hero. Thank you. We should get that on a soundboard. Hold on, so, a hero to the morning light. With okay. the hero thing, right? Is that I, and the reason I made the My Hero Akatera's House joke is because legit, this sounds like a shonen anime. Because after he says he wants to be a hero, he also says, it's impossible though, I can't do that, so I should forget about it. And I'm like, you motherfucking shonen protagonist, stop. And then Rosako's like, of course you can be a hero. And she's the motherfucking shonen romantic interest. Like, it's so uh. annoyingly on point. And like, then... like. Go ahead. I and then? when when we do get to the, the panel, <laughs> I I do agree wholeheartedly with Yama in this point, and it's like, what do you mean you want to be here? Like, to become a first responder? Yes. Like, you yeah. can be a hero. Like, there's training to take. EMT. You could, there's many ways to save lives. Although yeah. it is a point that he didn't say that like, he wants to save lives, and it's like, what what does being a hero mean to him? I'm I'm very interested in finding out. Like. What do you mean, like, yeah. like a hero, like, like a 
famous person that's inspiring or someone who literally saves lives like or EMT. I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. be an EMT. Go, yeah, does go need, get your certification. Does he need to be a mascot? Like, does he have to have a cape like yeah. Danger Rabbit or Night Monkey or something like that? Like, he's a vigilante guy. He's a bad man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see him doing that, but he would have the ultimate um, Clark Kent persona if he did become a superhero. That's true. He'd, oh, be, yeah. the, he'd be the least... You know, suspected superhero assuming. of the world. Yeah. See, I yeah. I wholeheartedly believe in the idea that yeah, famous people can be heroes in their own way, right? Because you always hear stories about like, oh, you know, I was going through this rough time in my life, but your YouTube videos or your podcast or your whatever like saved me, right? And in that way, sure, you are a hero. But to be the youngest boy in the house, to have just left mama's house, and still be very childlike to say i want to be a hero doesn't fly much like you so oh. Risako, oh. Yikes. Ris, Risako takes this opportunity as she's building him up like you can be a hero to get another date on the schedule too. take me skateboarding teach me how to skateboard let's do it let's get a date on the calendar here oh yeah she did have, say, yep have we taken me to a park have we gone a season without a skate though date though I don't know. Uh, skateboarding is way bigger in Japan than I thought. Yeah. I watched Terrace House. Like, there's a lot of skateboarding going. Yeah, it's still a yeah, thing. there is. Yeah, I think I don't think we have. Now that I think about it, but I, I mean, granted, we haven't seen all of Terrace House, but even so, there's a lot of skating, skating happening. Skato, skato, um, skato, skato, skato. Yeah. Um, and so, but we, yeah, we do cut to the the panel, and Yamachan becomes basically the <sighs> audience, at least me being the audience, and daily so far <laughs> I'm i just think like I, you want to be a hero just become a first response you're an idiot <laughs> i think though that like he is correct yamachan is correct in that there are many people that are he's going to build a fan base here ruka yes. is yes. there's a lot of people cheering for him there's a lot of people that are smitten and taken with him very much like torichan torichan is just drunk with head over heels for this guy like head he can do no wrong anything he says it's infinitely cute He's just like you can't really talk reason to her right now. She's too invested in liking him. I guess. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. So don't don't ask her for any objective opinions about Ruka for the time being. Yeah. Um, and but I, it's so annoying because it <laughs> I want him to be a dog so bad, and I kind of feel like he might be because he does seem like a heartbreaker. And I guess the reason why I am um, a little frustrated with him is because I sort of feel kind of deceived. Like, what do you mean you turn red every time you talk to a girl? Like, what do you mean you've never done all this stuff? Like, it seems like he was almost drumming up and playing the bashful persona to get this kind of affection and these kind of uh, accolades thrown at him. And it's kind of his move, yeah. maybe. Well, And it's worked for him in the past. And so I'm, I feel deceived, I guess, in a way. And that's kind of why I don't like him so much right now. So for me, it kind of depends, right? Because he is right in that he gets red around women. But I think maybe he should have... Well, he probably didn't say this because it'd be mean to say, but realistically, it's probably he gets read around women that he thinks are attractive. E.g. Haruka. Ouch. E.g. A lot of guys do that, though. Ouch. Not Risiko. Right. right, but I, I think and, a lot of guys get that way. Right, that but age. for him, it's it's like like everyone commented on it, like, whoa, you are so red, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's definitely like a trait for him, this bashfulness and this redness and all of that. So for me, I don't necessarily hate him because he's not deceiving us necessarily. And there's the full possibility that he does just see Risiko as a friend, right? I I want to believe that's true. I just feel bad for Risiko because very clearly Risiko is into him and Ruka is not picking up on those signs and or is a dick and is not ending the flame as soon as he can. He's playing the Terrace House game very well, I think, right now. I still just don't. I think, like I said last week, there's just, I feel like, a lot that we don't know about him yet. I feel like it will start to reveal itself as we peel the layers of the onion back. But I, I'm still on Team Yama here. Like, I, I want it to fail. But he is winning right now. <laughs> and Yama is defeated. And I must tuck tail as well because Ruka is... It's it's Ruka's world right now in Terrace House. We're all just in it, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's 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 true, though. I think that 
I think that Haruka and Risiko, whatever's happening here with Ruka, it, it's going to come to a head. There's going to be a fight. And I can't wait. Dun -dun -dun. Well, they're there, not, they're not open some... with each other. They're not communicating. The girls aren't. Haruka's no, scared, no, too. No, not really. They're no, scared, they too. So to, the panel talked about it. Something's going to happen. Yeah. Something is bound to happen unless they open up the channel communication. And that don't seem like it's happening anytime Ooh. soon. Oh, or maybe because Kaori knows both sides of this, right? Because both Haruka and Risiko have confided in Kaori. So maybe Kaori is yeah, going right. to be the good person, the only real good person in this house. And just the be Sena. like mediator. Yeah. And she'll be the Sena. Yeah. She'll just be mediator. She'll just be like, we're all here in the kitchen. Okay, mm. girls. Let's fucking nut up. Fight. We both like the same guy. We need to talk about this because it's going to be drama. I'm gonna nip it in the bud yeah, right she, now. She needs to be. She needs to become female Hansan right now. Dude, yeah. I wonder if that out would advice. happen. I wonder if yeah. if she could see the train wreck happening in slow motion before her eyes and maybe do something to circumvent it, or maybe not. Or too. maybe she's a little just she's anxious. She doesn't aware. want to get involved. After after this episode, I definitely feel like she's gonna be aware of like, oh, there's some there's some conflict on the horizon here. Mm -hmm. Mm, now it's a it's question of whether she likes the chaos or if she's gonna try to nip the drama in the bud early which we'll we'll find out maybe i don't know we'll see yeah or uh, i mean it just really depends on how ruka handles the situation that we're about to talk about wait what you know the situation <laughs> risako because risako and ruka after everyone else goes to bed they start playing a card game, which I can't identify. I don't know what that game oh, that they were speed? playing was. Yo, that's like at the end of the episode. We're not even halfway through the yeah, episode. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Oh, but shit. let's get there now. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get there now? Okay. So. Might as well. Yeah, so. We're alluding to At the it. end of the episode, they're playing Speed, the card game. I was kind of surprised you don't know what that is, but okay. And uh, there is just the two of them, and they play a few rounds, and then Risiko is doing this cheeky thing where it's like, okay. Whoever loses has to make a lifelong pr promise to the winner, right? What a weird, like, high-stakes game of speed this is. Yeah. I'd be wary of making that uh, that agreement before going to the game. And, it would freak and me out. And she's been drinking, and this is, like, it's almost, like, 3 a.m., if I remember right. Like, they've been playing for uh, a long time. They had and, dinner. They, Everyone else has gone off to bed. And this isn't the first night they've been playing speed together, too, because they alluded to the fact that they've been playing it the night before, too, right? Who knows hmm. how many times, how many nights they've done it, but they have, right? Hey, and they've hey, done it. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they're playing this game, this, this climactic game of speed, the one that could end all worlds. And Risago finally wins. And her wish is, if at all possible, can you be my buddy forever? This is, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to crash and burn on him, folks. This is, this is not what she wanted to say. She says what she wanted to say, but not in a way that Ruka can hear, or maybe he does, but is just giving her the out that it's like, oh, I'm just mumbling stuff because I'm drunk. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. She's she, The alcohol is breaking down her... Uh, her ability to her hold walls. herself back. Yeah, because I mean, like she after, after clearly, she... she clearly likes him more than maybe even she realizes. Yeah, right. I think maybe this came as a surprise to her too. Like, oh gosh, what yeah. Did I say because after she says my buddy forever, she lays down, he head on her arms, and then mumbles, "Be my boyfriend," and then he's like, ah! eh? "Eh, come again? What? Yeah." <laughs> Nani? <laughs> yeah. It? The fuck? Nani the fuck is this? And then <laughs> she says, Don't worry, I'm just tired, drunk, mumble, mumble, haha, ha, you know. Yeah, that's not uh, just something you can just pet glaze over there. So that killed me. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, no, Risako. God. Yeah. It I'm I wanna see what happens there. I want to see how it goes on, and I want to go and watch the next episode. But we still have, like, half of this episode we haven't talked about yet. True to form, though, Terrace House editors here created one fuck of a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. One fuck, fuck of a cliffhanger. One, <laughs> one fuck of a fuck. cliffhanger. Same. A single fuck. <laughs> can we, can we one talk? One big-ass fuck, though. Can we talk about the sick-ass burn on Shohei, though? 
God damn. Do it. Can you please talk it. about it? I just need to talk about this. So they're in, in Saikon in Mitaka, Tokyo. And Shohei meets up with Hideki, a carpenter, right? And Sho- like Shohei's job here is just to paint walls. That's fine. Whatever. Simple, basic menial labor, right? I love this contractor guy. He's one of my favorite characters. So yeah, he's pretty cool. He's pretty great. He uh, like while he while he's painting, the carpenter's working on some furniture, and uh, Hideki asks, "Oh, so are you kind of still up to your same old things?" And Shohei's like, "Oh, you know, I found a lot of passions in Tokyo. I wrote a book. I guess that's a thing now." <laughs> um, and Hideki, he seems like he knows Shohei for a couple years now because he's like, "Ah, yeah. just as indecisive as ever, huh?" This motherfucker. Yeah. And it's, this is just hearkening back to the temper incident from two episodes ago, right? About Shohei wants yeah. to do everything. Uh, he wants to be, even if everyone calls him a broke jack of all trades, that's what he wants to be. Mm, and Hideki comes yeah. back and he says, you may be broke, but you're not a jack of anything. Thought you should you know. Are jet- <laughs> you're jack shit, dude. Damn. Damn, dude. Just ripped right into yeah. him. No filter. Just destroyed him. Dude, this and, is yeah. the kind of good friend that everybody needs, though, to fucking lay That's what I'm straight. saying. He's, he's, keeping, he's keeping Shohei grounded. And he says afterwards that Shohei says that that stung what he said to him. But you know what? It kind of derives from our discussion in the last episode. And we were talking about Shohei being very insecure with himself, right? Mm. And now mm. we have his, his carpenter friend here just going in on those insecurities and just calling them out and bring it, pulling them out into the open. And so now Shohei is, is now he kind of has to do a little bit of self-reflection and contemplation. Yeah. Yeah. I think it it's especially because it was from someone that he knows and probably trusts mm. to know him right. that he like the the kind of argument that um, Haruka has been making kind of got through to him and it was like. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah, he even confides in Haruka and uh, Kaori later, right? Like in the kitchen about this happened. He called me aimless. I didn't like being called aimless. It hurt my feelings. Uh, my feelings. And you both Haruka and Kaori are kind of just trying to encourage him. Maybe maybe focus on acting then for a while. See where that takes you. Hi- one of the highlights here, though, of the episode for me personally was when it was right at this scene that we're talking about where Haruka walks in and Kaori's there, Kaori's there at the table and flashes all of a sudden like the greatest smile I've seen all season. Yeah. Kaori's got an good. awesome smile. I was like, I, wow. I thought she was going to be like kind of the star of our show here, but she's just she's got her shit so together that yeah. we don't get to see her a whole lot. Yeah, we Dude. don't. We don't. We don't get a l- damn near enough cowardly Th- in this episode. That like, smile you know. lit up the whole room. I was shocked. I was like, "Wow, that's a really." Good we smile. also got, and this is just like purely on, from a technical standpoint. We got an angle that I've never seen before, <laughs> where you can see how from the kitchen you can see the living room because mm. she was like, "Oh, we went to what was that place called, Shohei?" And Shohei's like too immersed in whatever mm. he's like on his laptop Writing on the couch textbook. that he doesn't. His, yeah, writing his um, writing autobiography his called Aimless. Um, mm. But a, a like, Shohei story. I I don't know. That was just really interesting to me, like seeing that angle, like where the chalkboard was and everything. Yeah, it was a good angle, I think. But I don't yeah. know with with Shohei here. He's just like, yeah, I get it. Being a jack of all trades makes me come off as aimless, and I don't like being called aimless. So to fix that, I'm gonna do nothing. <laughs> that's his solution there you go it's, it's very I could, think it's very like mm. principal skinner am i out of touch no it's the others who are no. wrong it, it is the kids who are <laughs> it's wrong the children who are um wrong. yeah uh i think this is one of those things where uh it's gonna take some like self-reflection on his part but then like also he needs to seek out more advice I think I think someone is is gonna have to set him on the right path because if I if I were the person like advising Shohei and he's like I don't really know what I want to do, why don't why doesn't he just like completely invest himself in the idea of movie making right? Mm. Uh, instead of just trying to be an actor, why don't you familiarize yourself with everything that goes into production too? Or you know what I'm saying? Become a a production assistant or get yourself on a movie set in other ways, other than just acting. I don't know. That's the kind of angle that I would probably tell him if 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 I was to you know. Hey man, you need to like chill out. <laughs> yeah, that's the funny thing, right? Because being a producer is being a jack of all trades, but for film. 
Mm, you know, so right. Like, that's what I'm saying. So I, that sounds like up his alley. Yeah, it's right there for him. But, but all right. he wants to build furniture and paint walls and write, write book. lyrics. He can do and that lyrics. and do that songs. That all goes into movie production <laughs> and the song for Spicy Soul. Yeah, <laughs> which we get to later. <laughs> yeah. The thing for me with Shohei is that like he sees all the things that he's interested in as like very big pathways to take like I could make a living off of this whereas I think he needs to regulate some of them to this is a hobby that I like very much versus like I'm going to go into writing lyrics I'm going to go into just writing I'm going to go into this and it's just like pick pick two yeah and then pick have, three. have some hobbies yeah and I mean, there you go think about it when we met this guy what was he doing he went to a country he didn't even know the language to work. Like he just seems like very flighty, right? Mm. Like very definitely can't focus on anything. Just flows with the wind. Aimless is a word that keeps coming up when people talk yeah, about Shohei. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, he's at least trying to go out and do stuff. And good, yeah, know, I applaud that too aim- to a certain level. Yeah, at least he's not the aimless type where he's just sitting resting on his laurels. You know what I'm saying? Yeah going with the flow and kind of just living off the land so to speak just kind of there existing yeah i I've, i'm interested to see how he moves on from this because it's definitely like uh it's an awakening for him it's a make or break moment yeah and just hmm. where he goes from here i think will kind of shape him up for the guy he's going to be for the next five years <laughs> is it right, Hideki? This, the is Carpen- it Hideki, the name of his mentor the carpenter Carpenter, yeah. So it's just like, I mean, he says that he's taken aback by those comments. He's saying that he doesn't want to be thought of as aimless, but then Haruka gives him good advice. He's like, well, listen, you don't have to change anything, but if but if you don't like being thought of as aimless, I think she says maybe you could change something so that you don't feel that way. And it's just like, you know what I mean? He wants his cake and he wants to eat it too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, cake. cake. I think his, <laughs> I think his head will slowly start to wrap around it. I hope. I hope this doesn't turn into a you die situation where, you know, uh, gosh, I'm forgetting his name. Taka. Taka has this talk with you die. This really deep talk. They cry. You know him about being a chef and blah blah blah. So I hope that's not translating here to where, you know. He has this revelatory moment, but then ends up doing nothing about it. Right. Yeah. As long you as Shohei saying? doesn't get a tattoo on his chest that reads, you're my angel, I think he'll be fine. You're. Yeah. Uh, you're. You're. But let's move on you to the are. next scene in the episode here. We're in Daikanyama. It's Haruka and Kenny. They just stepped out of the uh, the the live show with Haruka's friend, yeah. Kaori, not the Kaori we know. Wish we could have seen that. Yeah. Would have been cool. Yeah. Maybe licensing or something. I don't know. Eh. Yeah. Um, but they, they talk about the show. The show was fine. They had fun. And they go to a Mexican restaurant to get burritos. And I just want to point out the sign there mm. says, have a burrito day. Y'all ever have a burrito oh. day? <laughs> yeah. Frijoles. So, so is it, it has like, many layers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is it saying like, have a burrito day? I am saying going, like have a burrito sort of day. Uh, I don't think it makes any sense. No, I didn't. <laughs> it's it's it's, no. No. But the thing, the controversial statement I have here is that I, I don't. I think it's yucky when burritos have lettuce in them. I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't like burritos with lettuce. I like burritos with hot stuff, Man. not cold stuff. Someone's not having a burrito day today, huh, Jack? No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, but they wow. had lettuce in it, and I was just like, no, thanks. I'll pass. <laughs> I yeah I feel I don't know I definitely don't do the whole lettuce thing in my burrito either mm. so I'm kind of with you on that get the health do sour out of my cream, burrito though. I do sour cream oh definitely I'm saying get the health out of my burrito is what yeah. I'm saying to you I'm <laughs> saying, uh, get the health uh, out of my burrito Kenny Kenny was <laughs> laying on the sauce pretty thick when they were eating also the there were many things that were painful about this conversation that they had. But a yes. big one was that they were constantly having like these huge mouthfuls and then having to like <laughs> cover their mouths as they were talking. And yeah, they were definitely were stuffing uh, their faces as they talked. Burrito is and not, and I'm sure they were starving. So burrito is not maybe the best conversational God. food. No, no, because you just look like you're having a mess on your face. Yeah, you um, need whoa. You need to have mm-hmm. like what um, it's referred to as the silent grazing. Like have a period of just chewing. Yes. Have a conversation with your taste buds, motherfuckers. That's what I'm go. saying. <laughs> but, but I mean, but that would have been better than ahead. the conversation they had. God, Bro, yeah. Can I can I ask a question to the internet and to you guys? Yes. What's a Harley? 
because <laughs> we don't no know. No one's ever going to answer. <laughs> I mean, no one answers it. No yeah, one. Because it's just on their It starts coming out. Dude, that's what I was talking about earlier when I said when I said the editing is bad on this episode. It's like she they were she was actually spending the time with Kenny talking about how awesome Ruka is. Yep. Great, yay! And talking about how he drives a Harley and da 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 da. Oh. And he likes cars and then he's and he's a great driver and all this stuff. And then he and then she brings up he wants a Harley and Kenny's just like ha, ha, what's a want, Harley? Nani? And then I thought that I missed the response, so I rewound it. I was like, wait, she never answered him. And I rewatched. It. I'm like, no, they just she just sits it out. there and chews and looks at him. She's <laughs> just I, like, um, 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 I think it was a weird edit. Is yeah. after looking back at it now. Yeah, it's either a weird edit or just Haruka's like. I can't believe this motherfucker doesn't know what Harley is. <laughs> we'll like, yeah, we'll like, never know what like, Harley this is. This was the wrong choice. Like just yeah. going through her head. Yeah, like that's that's, that's the that's when she realized. I mean, Kenny just lost a bajillion points there. Is and, this guy for real? Uh, what a Harley is? Oh god. He, oh, I hope yeah. not. He loses even more because her topic of conversation is how cool this other guy in the house is. His topic of conversation is I don't remember anything you said on the first day. So let's just have that conversation god. again. Oh, that was brutal. I the, mean, here's the thing. Okay. Is it a dick move? I, re- I, I, I relate to Kenny a lot in this, okay? So is it a dick move that he didn't remember everything she said on day one? Or is it maybe a dick move on the other side of the coin for her to, like, hold him to such high account because he didn't remember everything she said day one? I mean... Like, to, it's kind of both sides, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. I could, Well, here's my thing. So... Day one in a in something like Terrace House, not only are you moving in together, right? Like with new people that are complete strangers. On top of that, you're on national, international TV, you know, being recorded. So can you really expect someone to remember everything that's going on when you're having so much thrown at you, so much information, so many things are flying at you in that one day. I mean, my point is that, like, listen, man, if I'm in a big social meeting, a big social circle, I don't get pissed when people don't remember my name right away. Yeah. And I always joke about how I don't remember. I'm really bad with names. So also to that same token, if some if I say something to somebody like two weeks ago and it, or three weeks ago, who knows how long this has been on the show, but and, and it comes up later and maybe I forgot some details or even that it was said at all, I can't see myself getting, like, being that pissed, but like, I already said this. This is ground covered, bro. I'm just gonna say her chew my burrito. Fuck you. Like it just seemed like kind of like she could have spun it, so it wasn't so awkward. I just think they both contributed to the awkwardness. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah I, I, she, I think in that situation, it's it's a little bit of a lack of understanding on her yeah, part. I, in my, she might have. I think it was like she had some expectations and like mm-hmm. an idea of like how things were going to go down. And she was like, oh, yeah, like before all this happened, she was like, yeah, we're we're, we're going to have chemistry. We're going to really mm-hmm. hit it off. And then it was like, he doesn't remember anything I said about like mm-hmm. my prior relationship, which is something I'm vulnerable about. And he doesn't know anything about Harley's. He doesn't know what a Harley is. Uh, th- it was just all the disappointment happening at once. Mm, a yeah, cascade yeah, of disappointment. Yeah. And we even find out, like, you know, later on, they're um, in the girls' room with Haruka and Kenny, and Haruka's just like, nah, dude. Kenny dude, is she just. just pro- yeah. No. She just proceeds to shit on the man for like half an hour. Yeah. Admittedly. Oh. Admittedly, I did agree with her point that. Kenny just doesn't get like very enthusiastic about anything mm-hmm. so far. He's just kind of like he's very chill, which is fine. Like you can have that disposition. That's typically a very pleasant disposition to have, but I can see how that was kind of like she she wanted some enthusiasm. Yeah, some she wanted excitement. something. She wouldn't, you know, she wanted, you know, cuz Haruka is a very emotional person. I mean, she's somebody that like, you know, they had the temporary incident happen and then she rebrought up the the topic at hand. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so she she obviously gets invested in conversation. Yeah. Um, And, and so that's what she was expecting out of, out of Kenny. And she just wasn't getting that. So in that turn, it was kind of in that moment that she realized that now because of that event, Ruka is now put up even more in a pedestal to Haruka. Uh, right. I have a third hot take. Third hot take real quick. Rapid fire here. I'm just say it. And I'm gonna leave it there. Kenny is Armand. Kenny is Armand. Yeah, kind of. Kenny is Armand. No, yeah, though. Because Kenny, he has that problem where because he's so chill about everything, you can't tell what he likes talking about. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? His eyebrows don't move. Like every, That's true. Everything is at a baseline level for him. Like, 
You talk about music, yeah. he's like, cool, mm. music. You talk about he, Legos, he's like, cool, Legos. You know? He's a hippie dude. He's got Jesus in his van, in his bus. He's got a bus. He wants to live by the beach. He want he loves Jack Johnson. Do the fucking math. He's probably high as shit. He smokes tons of weed. <laughs> he toasts, he toasts the all the time. Math. He's toasted, dude. Like, come on. He's chill. He's Oh, uber chill man. yeah he, you would not find him on a harley which is probably why he doesn't know what a harley is i can imagine this isn't the first time a female probably has uh you know got their jimmies rustled that he's not as uh forthcoming <laughs> you know <laughs> yes as as they got would the like you like what feel something i can see girls shaking i'm like why tell me how you feel yeah i just he's just like hey i'm here hey, I'm, I'm just here I'm man like, we're just i'm hey. on my bus on this earth that is spinning around in the just, void just, of he's space. a hippie yeah. he's a hippie man he's armand man <laughs> man <laughs> uh haruka does also say he's cute like a poodle which i only see in the hair not really much else and she, Yikes. that stuck with me <laughs> yeah uh, and she also calls him a teddy bear to which kauri extrapolates to like pooh bear so this is he's also kind of guy i guess guy well yeah i mean they have some they all love the beach this is the this is the one thing they all have in common at least they're all grounded by the beach yeah but as a man myself i can only speak for myself i would hate it if somebody described me as a poodle i don't anticipate that ever happening (laughs) if you know what i look like i don't think anyone would say i look like a poodle (laughs) but just not a compliment that i would hope for one day Mm. but I, my most my favorite well not my favorite but the thing that I found most interesting in this scene is that Haruka talks a lot we don't know what Kaori thinks about I mean no. Kenny in this case but also just extrapolating that really anyone she's barely in this episode but yeah I mean not only that but she just doesn't really participate in the like oh I think he's this way I think she's that way she right it, yeah Ka- Ka- she, hasn't she, really opened up really that much I just, yeah mm. she's a great listener mm. like everyone feels like they can go on these extended monologues with her so clearly she's demonstrated like she's gonna listen and make funny comments like Pooh bear son yes <laughs> is Pooh is there a date on the slate with Kauri? it's just with shohei right they have something on the queue uh they've they've mentioned oh there's this other bar we should totally go to sometime that's it though right no no traction no, no love at all either. with the other two guys at all well kenny right. kind of i mean, no no dates but oh, like yeah, they, just, the they drawing, bond. bond yeah that's they definitely bonded yeah. mm-hmm. that's the that's the love i want to see bloom Same. on this battle i would say yeah i would say at this point I think that the ball is in Kenny's court as far as what's going to happen next, whether that's with Haruka or with Kauri or even Risiko out of the blue. Like, I I, I don't see that happening, but I mm. think that if if anyone's going to go out, he's, he's the one that's going to have to be asking it. Mm-hmm. I don't think that anyone's going to ask him out. Maybe Kauri would be like, hey, do you want to go to this? Like, hey, my cat, that cafe that's selling my t-shirts maybe yeah yeah yeah. because mm. i that was last episode she she mentioned something like that so mm-hmm. but other than that i don't think anyone's gonna like actively pursue kenny at this point mm. yeah yeah I, I'd, I'd see i see kenny with coyote more than anyone else right now oh, i would like to posit a possibility here shohei might go after kenny <laughs> they, don't talk. they were a, they were having a good time yeah, that night. They've got a buddy bromance. Went, I mean, they. I mean, yeah, he's writing that song for him, isn't he? That's where yeah. we go to and, on the couch. That's true. In the next scene, that's like, what they we were drinking. Yeah, that's what we see. We see Kenny and Shohei <laughs> off on their side of the room, just fucking playing the musics and doing the lyrics. Mm. I'm just saying, man. That's true. I mean, there's a blossoming bromance could turn into a romance. Could you could you imagine like three, four weeks from now, they're, they're going through a bunch of drafts of the lyrics and then Kenny just starts singing the lyrics blind to the tune that he's made up. And then the last lyric on the page is Kenny, I love you. And he looks up <laughs> and Shohei's like, yeah, that's right. I love you. <laughs> Orewa. <laughs> you really spent a lot of time. You. you spent a lot of time oh in that scenario, Robert. I will read this fan fiction. <laughs> if it doesn't actually happen, which you And knows. cue the rule 34. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and bring out the needles and let's start sticking metal in people's ears. Yeah, what the fuck uh, was oh, that? that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I forgot I... about that part. 
like I don't have any cartilage piercings, but I know that, you know, as with any piercing, you take it out, you leave it out, it's gonna, your ear's gonna regenerate, mm -hmm. essentially, like a lizard, yeah. because we're all lizard people. No, I'm done. Um, but she, for some reason, instead of going to, like, a piercing parlor or anything, Risiko just bought some needles and was like, Kenny and Shohei are too afraid to stick me with a needle through this hole Ugh. in my ear cartilage that's close Will you do way. it yeah. because and i feel like ruka also did it not only because they have a closer relationship but also because he also has piercings right so it's like he knows the the struggle as someone but with turned out to be fruitless anyway Ugh. yeah well first of all uh i mean part of it was definitely like risiko likes ruka so that's that's part of why she probably asked him to do it a way to I get mean, closer yeah exactly um, and so, like, I, I'm sitting there, I'm like, is she really going to have him try to pierce through her cartilage Dude. himself with a, a needle? I'm like, this is bad news written all over it. I don't think she knew that it was closed up at the time, but here's the thing. So, as someone who's got a lot of tattoos, and at one point, I don't have them anymore, but at one point, I had 10 body piercings. This was super Ooh. hard to watch for me because you never... Never, if there's any peer, people in the Pearson community listening to this, we know this. You never just hand someone bare hand, like needles and jewelry, and say, "Put this in my skin and in my body." Mm -hmm. That's like pathogens and germs and all kinds of. You're just opening yourself up for a world of pain and hurt and pus. Gross. And uh, it's like, yeah. dude, like grab some gloves and wash your hands. And oh my god, it's just like it was so unsanitary. I just couldn't stand it. And then he's poking and prodding, and it's definitely got to be inflamed at this point because scabs have closed it over. It's like worst case scenario. Like she's she might have to go to a, like an actual peer shop or something like that, or get some like true disinfectant, some saline or something. But I just hated the whole situation. But w they were really close there for a while, right? He hurt the <laughs> shit out of her. <laughs> yeah, with the needle, but they were close for a while, and that's what she wanted. Yeah, they're like, she "Oh, we're gonna get a piercing gun." I was like, "No, I mean, piercing guns are still a bad <laughs> idea." Go buy a yeah. piercing gun. That's never a good idea either. Like, just go somewhere and get it yeah, done by professional. Yeah, just go to a fucking piercing shop. Please. Good God. So I just it was a way. I think again, it was a vehicle to close the proximity right. with her interest. Yeah, but I, I even if I, I like someone, I'm not gonna be like, "Hey, can you like stick this needle?" In my ear, like, please. Poor life decisions. I don't. I don't think that's like a good way to like really get close to someone either, because it's like, what if it's gross? What if? What if you start bleeding all over them? Or what if it's infected? Mm -hmm. Like, are you like, hey, scratch this scab off of my ear, and it's like so hot. That's it's, yeah, very very erotic. Very. I'm, I'm just waiting for Robert to make strengthening. I'm waiting for Robert to make the penetration joke here. It hasn't happened yet, but I just said it, so yeah. Well, now you don't have to. one. You did my <laughs> work. Is. Two. He didn't even do it. So yeah. <sighs> it was. It grossed me out. That just was like a scene, y'all. The, the, the germs of it grossed me out. Yeah, yeah, like it didn't. Like it. It overshadowed any kind of romance that might have happened for me. Yeah, and then the rest of the scene devolves to Kenny and Shohei still having their bromance in the living room, and Risako and Ruka migrate over to the kitchen to make some some dump some gyoza, and they share dinner. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a weirdly intimate thing while you have yeah. Shohei and Kenny off in the background still singing. Yeah, this, and, is this where she's eating the popsicle? Yeah, it's where she's eating the popsicle, and it's where uh, Ruka says, "Oh, you were in my dreams again." Oh, and yeah, and then they have that conversation. Then Haruka is like, like here for it, and then they're like Arisako, and they're like, oh, we should move over to that table. And then she like, I remember because she tilts the ice cream at him. She's like, yeah, we should move over to that table, shouldn't we? It was it was weirdly erotic. <laughs> it was like, I was like, oh, like, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, hello. I, I not to yeah. Is is Ruka way, picking up what she's putting down here at this point? Like, I doubt it. I he can't be. Right, like I don't dude. know, Ruka. He'd be more red faced. Yeah, Ruka's a fool. He's an idiot. And when we come to the panel here, everyone, like even Yama, admits, "Okay, fine, Ruka has some game." Like he's an un, he's an unwitting, unintentional. Yes, he's an unwitting genius. Yes, is what it is. And he's done the yes. impossible here, which he's shut Yama up. So I have to give him props. Because Yama's hating on him, much like I am, much like other people are on this podcast.
but he's winning right now. There's there's no flaws in his game. Yeah. There's no holes here. He doesn't he hasn't exhibited any flaws. His only flaw is that he's bashful. That's it. I'm waiting. And it's That's only it. worked in his favor. I'm waiting. <laughs> I want him to become the ultimate villain of like even worse than Yui. That's what I want. It could oh, it could be dang. a build. Oh yeah, I absolutely want the the, the heel turn to he's happen. Suddenly like yeah. plotting and mm -hmm. I don't see it. We have an argument. We have an argument though. in our future, friends. Man, I Man, do. If these, if these girls don't communicate, this is going to be an issue. It's going to be disastrous. Yeah, yes. sure. Unless they start talking with each other. Yeah. Uh, and this episode ends with that scene where they're playing speed. And Risako sort of kind of confesses. Sort of kind of. Yeah. Be my boyfriend. Be my boyfriend. Uh, is it a confession when it's drunk? That's maybe the, it is. Yeah. That, maybe that makes it mostly a confession. Yeah, that's why I said sort of kind of, right? Because it's like, it's not a confession, but now we know how you feel. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's out honest, there. Per honest person's words are a sober person's thoughts. I, I did want to bring up real quick, too, that. Yeah, what? <laughs> An honest person's words are a sober person's thoughts. Oh, Colin shit. Sparling, yeah. 2019. <laughs> I'm just going to wreck it up to Colinisms. Uh, there yeah. we go. We needed one for 2019, 2020. Yeah. But I don't want to. Drunk person's words, sober band's thoughts. That's what it is. Anyway. Okay, okay. okay. Soggy blankets, guys. Tori Chan threw oh, a blankets. nice one on Yama where, when he was like defeated. He was quiet in an effort to comfort him. She goes, "But you and Ruka are like completely different people." <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, I don't want to hear that though because she <laughs> loves him. And soggy I soggy blanket of comfort. Mm -hmm. And like Yama and Tori Chan have an interesting relationship. They have an interesting dynamic because he wants her to like him, I think. And not necessarily romantic, but she I think he wants to be seen as a man to Tori Chan. Well, I mean, and she just constantly like berates him, like, no, you're just a creepy old man, whatever, da da da. And it's it's funny. It leads to a lot of humor there. But yeah. they have an interesting relationship. I mean, that's all a character though. I mean, like the, it's yeah. it's not like Yama's trying to actually like really. No, he's married, but yeah. but it's part of their persona on the show. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. he. I think he just wants Story Channel to, to have nice feelings, positive feelings about him. That'll never. But happen. he also no, wants. Uh, yeah. To, they're just they're just trying to have on screen chemistry. Right? I, yeah, yeah. But they but he also wants to blurb and say his feelings, and they usually end up upsetting Story Channel more than anything. Yeah, but I mean, it's funny. Th that's what that's what it's like in any comedy troupe. Like the the day that Mo is actually nice to Larry and Curly is the day the Three Stooges die. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they have they. Yeah, that's when it'll get less interesting. Right. I agree. They have to, quote unquote, hate each other. They have to be at odds. But and that soggy blanket solidified. <laughs> yes. But before we wrap this episode, I kind of want to ask you guys, what do you think is going to happen here? What do you think? How, how do you think Ruka is going to respond to the to the boyfriend confession? So here's here's the thing. I think Ruka is being Ruka. He's going to sidestep the shit out of that. Yep. Yeah, he's going to sidestep the shit out of it. And he's just like, I don't know. He's probably going to call her. He's like, he's going to say, like, you're drunk or something like that. And yeah, I don't know. We're, I, if I had to guess, we're going to start up the next episode. And that's it's going to cut to that scene. And it's going to replay, like, be my boyfriend. And he's going to be like, what? And he's just going to be like, oh. Okay, that was the thing you said. Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna go to bed. I think they're sweeping she, on the rug as fast as humanly possible, and she's yeah. gonna be more than willing to do it as well too, and just drum it up to the liquor again, mm. the alcohol. And I think yeah. that because from Ruka's perspective, a yes to Risako is a no to Haruka, and he's not ready there yet. He he hasn't even gotten off the ground with that. So exactly. I don't think his feelings he's are with not, her. Yeah, he's not, not ready. Prepared. He's not ready yet. He, he, he no. I don't even know if he'd be ready to be Haruka's boyfriend yet. I don't know this guy. How right, but I think this is one of those things where Ruka is going to sit so hard on the fence, right, where it, uh, an argument's going to bubble up because of it. It's going to bubble up between Haruka and Risako, and then that's going to bubble up into an argument that's, er, well, harsh feelings toward Ruka. Mm. Early on, that. I predicted way back that Risako, Risaka might be the first person to leave the house and my prediction also said w w it was because maybe she wouldn't be able to find love in the house. And now that I and that was before I knew her. And now that I know her, I really like her. I think she's a very kind soul. Um, I have a lot of positive feelings about her. So I would hate 
for that prediction to be right now. I don't want her to get shot down too soon and then just give up and leave the house. Mm. So I hope she sticks yeah. with it and maybe explores I, other possibilities. So that's my hope. Yeah. I hope where we move from here is like literally like the next scene is the next day. And it's like that was just like he genuinely didn't hear her. And we're just going to move on and pretend that didn't happen and mm. let things happen as they do. Unless she's the and type of person to double down on it the next day. Hopefully not. Shit. I want to revisit this conversation we'll from last night. No, I think... By the way, when I told you I liked you, I meant that. Yes. I'm like, please don't do that. No, I think what's going to happen here is that... Like, this is a pretty classic case of... Right now, in, Riz in Ruka's point of view, Risa goes his backup. Right? If Ugh. Haruka turns him down to the prom, at least he can settle on Risako. Right? Ouch. Yeah. You're my silver Ooh. medal. And that is a shitty place to be. And I really want Risako to realize that as soon as possible and be like, I don't need you. I'm good. I've got need you. I've got parkour. I don't need this. I, I'm that gonna I'm gonna jump away. back over this wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm actually surprised at how quickly she allowed she let her guard down with this guy. Mm. She she it seems I mean yeah, maybe she it's the editing throwing herself at him a little. It bit. It seems like yeah. the editing, but I mean it seems to all be happening very fast after their last. But I date. mean, we've already mentioned too that like she's she's very upfront. Yeah, like she told everyone right. the first day about like yes. a past relationship. So. Yes, I but, think she's yeah. a kind of a hard on her sleeve person, for sure. And the fact to just come out there—I mean, we've already established on the show how much pomp and circumstance there is typically around someone asking someone to be their boyfriend or girlfriend. I mean, look at Shohei from O and D. Holy crap, <laughs> it's a big deal. So it was very nonchalant here. So she could also just brush it off like, ah, I'm just joking. It's just a joke. I'm very interested to see what happens. I'm intrigued, and uh, but I want good things for her, and I want bad things for Ruka. Well, let's go find out right now because I, I want to go yes. watch that episode. So let's wrap up this week's episode of Tadaima. Uh, we hope you enjoyed everything that you've heard us do here. Uh, you know, we have a lot of fun making the show, but we hope that you all equally have a similar amount of fun listening to the shenanigans we pull. Uh, if you uh, have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything you want to throw at us for that Q&A that we'd love to do, please email that to us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. You can catch us next Tuesday. We talk about episode five of Tokyo 2019, 2020 called Reiwa. Uh, but you have to wait a week for that, just like we will. This has been Tadaima. Thanks for listening. Itekimasu. If you enjoy our show, please like, comment, and subscribe, and ding that bell to receive notifications when we publish new content. Follow us on social media and check out our brand new Discord server, linked in the description below. See you there.